Welcome to our next, le next lesson on our fairy tale writing guys. Today what we're going to be working on is we're going to be using description to develop characters and story ideas. So if you remember our last time we met, we talked about writing that introduction, introducing the characters, describing them, telling us what the problem is. But today we're going to make sure that we include details that will provide the reader with important information about these characters. We're going to add even more. We're also going to provide details that support our story events. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use description to develop your characters and story events. So I have this that I wrote. Let me put it down for us. So we have this. Now let's make it a little bigger. I think we do 6, no, 24. That looks better. So we have this same part. Once upon a time. So notice, I kind of have the exact same thing up here. But we're going to have something a little bit different when we compare them. Because you'll notice, I have this part and I did some editing. I did some changes. Because I really didn't like how I started this portion. So I rewrote it and this is what we have. So let me read it for us. Once upon a time, a young boy named Peter lived with his parents on a small farm a few miles from the king's castle. His parents were kind and hardworking. Peter loved his parents and helped them as much as he could, but the family was poor, and it was a difficult life. One day, when Peter was helping his father plow one of his fields on the farm, he saw a group of mighty horses approaching up the lane beside the farm. It was the prince riding with the nobleman. The prince was tall, proud, and dressed in fine clothes. Peter felt ashamed of his old, worn clothes. He wished he could be a prince. So. When I described Peter's parents at the beginning, I said that they were kind and that they were hardworking, that they were honest. This description suggests to the reader that they're good parents and people have admirable or good qualities. I also told the reader that Peter loves his parents. That helps explain why he misses his parents when they are gone. We get to that part at the end. The first plot event in my story is Peter seeing a prince ride by. So this is my first event right here. So I'm going to put that in our highlighted this time. So that's my first event. Peter becomes envious of the prince. He becomes jealous because the prince looks so noble. I can emphasize how wonderful the prince looks by using descriptive language such as mighty horses. So I didn't just say he came by on horses, but he came by on those mighty horses. So it gives them like a sense of power. We have these words tall, proud, fine clothes. So those are also giving us this description of the prince, letting us know that he's not just a regular person, but there's like this air around him that's saying, hey, there's something different about me. I can then use descriptive language to create a contrast, to create the opposite, showing how Peter feels about himself. He feels ashamed of his old, worn clothes. So here, we have some description of Peter that I'm going to underline for us. So we're showing how he's the opposite of the prince. Because remember, that's the big problem that we have. The prince is everything Peter wants to be. Now, when you're doing your writing, I want you to think on how you can describe your characters. Don't just say, the boy were clothes. See if you can put them like we had in here. Describe those clothes. Fine clothes. Old, worn clothes. Don't just say he is happy, but describe to us how he's happy. He's dancing with joy. He's screaming out loud. So use those descriptions to describe. So these are adjectives. They describe something. So we have this adjective for horses, mighty. We had our adjective for prince, tall, proud. So they're all describing something. We have this adjective for clothes. They're fine clothes. We could put, even if we wanted, we could put exquisite clothes. Now it's misspelled. So remember, we always do that spell check. And remember, if it's so bad, that means we have to try it again. And then if it's still bad, what do you think we do? Ah, if it still wasn't here, I was hoping I'd spell it so bad. I actually have no idea what this word is right here. If it was still misspelled bad, then we might go to the internet, type it in there, and see if Google could help us out. Now, remember, we want that descriptive language in there to help our readers understand what's going on. So I use those words like mighty, tall, proud, exquisite 
to show the prince, and then I use the words like ashamed, old, and worn to describe Peter. Because remember, we want the reader to know that he is not like this prince. Good luck with your writing today, guys. Make sure you have those descriptions in your paragraph.